Soldier, keep on marching on. Head down to the work is done. Waiting on the morning sun. Soldier, keep on marching on. I watch the snow fall and cover the streets outside my window in a thick white blanket. This was the third winter I found myself alone. I had a wife and a son out there somewhere and I didn't know whether they were dead or alive. I didn't know if they were safe or if they had all that they needed to live comfortably. I didn't know if Nuria had another man and if my son thought him to be his daddy. My fist clenched as I thought of some other man touching my woman, pleasing my woman. There is no torture on earth that can equal what I have gone through the last few years. I barely eat or sleep. I haven't slept through the night since she left me. And dear Yah, I was so tired. So very tired and I can't rest. The worst part of it all is knowing that this is all my fault because of my inability to accept and face my flaws. My family has gotten torn apart. I have punished myself by not eating anything good, no meat, no sweets, nothing but grain and vegetables. I gave my body basic nutrition, but nothing more. And I will continue to do this until I have my wife and my child back safe under my roof. I have done some serious soul searching, praying and fasting over the years. And it was hard facing me. I had thought that because I didn't allow others to worship me, or look at me as if I was something when I'm not. I was humble and maybe even, even perfect in Yah's sight. But over the years I have come to see that I've been so proud because I thought I knew certain things. There was no room for the teacher to teach me and show me the error of my ways. You see, in front of man, I have perfected my image as a humble servant. But Yah, Yah reached the heart, and my heart was so wicked. I had never truly looked at what I had done to my people, selling dope to my own people, killing Yah's children. How many babies didn't eat because their parents bought their money to me instead of going to the grocery store? I clutched my head as pain shot through it. How many children were sold so that their parents could give me the money? How many sat in a dark apartment because I had their bill money stuffing it in the G-strings of strippers? Oh, yeah, I cried out. As the pain became so unbearable that I began to cry like a baby. How many grandmothers were now raising grandchildren because the children, because their children could not take care of them for fiending for my product. I have been so proud of my empire, an empire that I have built off the blood of my people. Oh, yeah, I clutched my sides because I could not breathe. I could feel King rubbing against me, trying to comfort me, but there was no comfort for me. I had too much blood on my hands. Help me, Ava, I called out. I could not escape all those huge faces I had destroyed to get rich. Sharp pain shot through my head as image after image came before my eyes. I had helped the enemy kill my people. So many, too many to count, had stumbled because of me. I'm sorry, Father. Oh, y'all, please forgive me. I clutched my head, 
Please forgive me. What have I done? I am responsible for fatherless children. I am responsible for hyped out mothers. I am responsible for little graves laying in the cold ground. I looked at my hands. They were covered in blood. How selfish of me to want my family back when I am responsible for the destruction of the Hebrew family. Oh, yeah, I felt myself falling, but I couldn't stop as my world went black. I could feel and hear the glass table shatter under me. My last thought was, dear Yah, I am my people's adversary. I found her. Mouse said to the computer screen he stared at. I found her, he yelled. All activity in the gym came to a halt as everyone looked at Mouse stuck in a moment of limbo. Mouse turned to look at his brothers. I found her. You found her, Big Ox said, the first to come out of shock. He leaped off the ring and ran to Mouse, lifting the smaller Ox in a bear hug. You found her? Everybody else broke out of limbo at the same time. Lion, Solomon called, yelling up to the loft. Mouse found her. There was a loud boom from upstairs, followed by the door, the loft door that came flying to land in the ring before Lion followed, his majestic dreads flying in back of him. What? He looked into his smiling eyes of, the bro of his brothers, searching for the information he had thirst for. Mouse found her. Lion's eyes shot to his eye, a half grin spreading across his face. You found her? I found her, Aki. Lion drew back his head and roared so loud the equipment in the gym rattled. Hallelujah, he yelled even louder. Hallelujah, he fell to his knees in the center of the ring and in front of all his brothers, he began to tearfully worship Yah, thanking him for having mercy. The thought that the father had mercy on a wicked man like himself left him undone. He could not stop the tears. He didn't care who watched him. Big Ox stepped into the ring. He approached Lion and held out his hand. They clasped hands and Big Ox pulled Lion to his feet and wrapped him in a congratulatory hug. Toda Yah, the Big Ox began, before he too worshipped Yah for this blessing. He had been so worried about his Ox. Lion barely ate. He barely slept. He had even stopped training something that Big Ock knew he loved. Over the last few years, they barely even seen Lion in the gym. When they would go up to the loft to check on him, they always found him on his knees in a deep meditation prayer. He had lost so much weight that he was barely recognizable. Lion had told Big Ock, that because he was responsible for the breakdown of his family, he would no longer do his pleasure. And for the last year, Lion had given himself completely to the Heavenly Father. They had watched him stay in meditation for days at a time, not coming out to eat or sleep. The fellas didn't even believe he used the bathroom. So gone was he into whatever realm Yah had taken him. However, they all had noticed the change in Lion, the anger that they had all feared of his, the anger that worried them so much because they didn't know if it would consume the Ark and control him, and the thought of that was completely terrifying. That anger was gone, and had been gone for at least a year now. There had been no more fist fits of rage that had ended with the gym being trashed or somebody severely hurt. Something had happened to Lion while he journeyed on whatever journey Yah had taken him on in his meditation. 
something for the better. The ox no longer walks around on pins and needles trying to make sure lion stayed calm. Where is she, lion ox? Mouse. Alexander, Louisiana. It's been two days since I opened my bank account and there was no sign of lion. Maybe he's moved on and didn't want me anymore. It's easy for angels to say, go home. But humans had a thing called pride. That was our biggest stumbling block. I couldn't return to Chicago and lie in like, hey, I'm sorry. I didn't take the time to look at the situation with spiritual eyes. Can you forgive me? Take me back? Oh yeah, by the way, we have a son, and we both need you to provide for us. And, oh yeah, can you first make love to me? Pretty, pretty please? Psh. If only I didn't have that damn noble pride. Mama, can we go? Dawid asked. Patience, mister, I told him as I bundled him in his coat. Wednesdays was our park days. Dawid loved going to the park. It didn't matter how cold it was outside or how hot. Okay, baby, let's go, I said once we were both ready to go out in the cold. The park was just a short distance from my house, which was good, because I didn't have any gas money. I had given all to that messenger. That messenger, who had brought me good news as well as the most frightening news I had ever heard. He said to enjoy my family because our time together won't last. What did that mean? He said that the world was getting ready to go through extreme trial. I know what that means because I know what the Bible says. However, he hinted to the fact that we will be separated or some of us killed. Dear Yah, give me the strength to endure. As soon as we got to the park, Dawid shot off to join the other children. Everyone here were regulars, so we all knew each other. Hey y'all, I said to Carol and May, who I joined on the bench. Hey Meg, how's things with you? May asked. Different day, same crap. I took a seat on the bench with the ladies. Child, I hear you, Carol said. She tickled me because she was a white girl, but she didn't know it. She dressed like a broom and walked and talked like one too. I liked her because she was too funny. What's going on with y'all, I asked, not really interested. My baby daddy, Carol began, and I ain't gonna lie, I tuned her out. Carol was always having trouble out of her Hebrew man. It was clear to everybody he used her for her money and took advantage of the fact that she didn't have that snap most sisters did, so he was always stepping out on her. But if I heard one story of her woes, I've heard them all. Right now, I just had other things on my mind, like the fact that my two-year-old son was already showing signs of being a host for the Ruach like his father and the fact that the angel said it was imperative that lion be in Dawi's life goodness i was lost i didn't know what move i should make next girl may said touching my arm who is that fine man talking to your son oh my god is that his daddy carol said putting her hand on her chest. My eyes followed to where they were looking, and then the floor fell from beneath my world. Lion was there across the park, squatted down, talking to Dawi. First, I felt shock, and then panic. I thought a thought crossed my mind that maybe he was gonna to try to take my baby. I stood quickly and made my way towards them. Girl, let me tell you something. Nothing in the world would have made me leave a man that looked like that, I heard Carol say. Child, you ain't lying, May responded. 
If I wasn't so panicked, I would have shaken my head at them both. But right now, my only thought was getting to my child. Dawid, I cried, coming to stop about 20 feet from where they were. Lion had been so focused on his son, who was talking to him as if he knew him, that he didn't even see me approach. But when he noticed me, his eyes devoured me as he slowly stood. My insides clenched as his eyes started at my trembling covered feet and slowly made their way up my body. Ladies, my insides became liquefied at that look. Dawid, come here, baby. What did I tell you about talking to strangers? I asked, breaking eye contact with that man that was making me come undone. No stranger, mama. It's daddy. Lion's gaze flew back down to Dawid. You know who I am? He asked, his deep voice traveling down my spine, wrecking all kinds of habit. Dawid nodded his head. How did you know, Lion asked, looking as if he was on the very verge of tears. I took this time to take him in. It's true, he was still very fine, but compared to the Lion I remember, he was a wreck. He had lost so much weight, and he had bags and black rings around his eyes, as if he didn't sleep. His black rings, I know, matched my own. Dari shrugged at him before he held up three fingers. I want this many apples, he said in his little toddler voice. The tears lion was trying to hold back escaped as he squatted down to Dawi's level. You like apples? His voice sounded strained. Dawi nodded his head. Mm-hmm, you got some? He asked his father. Lion nodded his head before he stood and reached into a brown saddlebag he carried over his shoulder. And sure enough, he pulled out an apple, handing it to Dawid, who smiled big. It was official. My son now had a new hero. You got one for mama? He asked before taking a huge baby bite out of his apple. Lion nodded, reaching back into his bag before pulling out another, another apple. Slowly, he looked at me, unshed tears in his eyes. I do. He held the apple out to me. If she would have it. I stared at him, knowing we were speaking of more than just an apple. His eyes pleaded with me. I shook my head. No, thank you. Come on, Dawid. I picked him up and turned away from lying. May and Carol had made their way off the bench and was now conveniently pushing their kids on the swing right in back of us. I'll see y'all later, I called as I made my way out the park. I didn't look back as I buckled that weed in his car seat. Mama, what about Daddy? Don't worry about him, baby. I got in and I pulled off. No, he didn't think that he would bring me a stinking apple and everything would be okay. Damn him. I hit the steering wheel. Damn him. He still looks so damn good. His chocolate skin matched his chocolate eyes and his dreads to a T. And although he had lost a lot of weight, I could still see he was nicely muscled underneath his leather jacket. Mm. My body was betraying me because it had began to sing for him. It said when my lips would not. Daddy was home.